Up until recently, we could only really use arc guns with arc wing mode. And let's be honest, not a lot of people enjoy arc wing mode. But with the introduction of Profit Taker, we can now use arc guns in normal, average, everyday missions. As a big bada boom cooldown. Or so DE intended, at least. Today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Mastery Rank 5 Imperator Vandal and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on how to build the weapon and also some explanations on how heavy weapons work in Warframe. That said, please keep in mind that my builds and guides take a new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran of the game and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Imperator Vandal. Let's begin by taking a look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that we're simply gonna be taking a couple, well actually a lot of free shots. Now this thing is an absolute beast, it's a minigun of sorts and as you can see it does have a bit of a spool up to it in the sense that you will not start off at full fire rate, it takes just a little while in order for it to reach its maximum fire rate and you get a magazine size of 300 and an ammo reserve of 1200 so totaling 1500 bullets and don't worry about it you're gonna get rid of them pretty quickly because as you can see the fire rate is absolutely top notch it looks amazing and check out the sound just listen for a second can you catch that backlash that echoing backlash that the built into the weapon it is just freaking fantastic but let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with you gotta go to select mode and then to vehicles and then you gotta equip your heavy weapon let's jump into upgrade for a second now the way you can use these on the ground in normal average everyday missions is to install a gravi mag but first you gotta install an Oroken catalyst then you can install a gravi mag which costs 20 plat or you can just take the blueprint from your clan and build one it takes about a day to build one that said, let's take a look at stats when it comes to Atmosphere mode versus Arcwing mode. Now, all of these weapons have an Arcwing mode and a uh, Heavy Weapons mode, or better said, a Atmosphere mode. Normally, the Imperator Vandal has 15% critical chance, but in Atmosphere mode you get 28, and you also get a much beefier critical multiplier, 2.4 up from 2.0. And you also get a higher status chance as well. You get 12% instead of the base 10%. And you also get a bit of a buff on the damage as well, but not that much as you can see. How are we gonna build a weapon such as this? You will see that the architecture type is not really all that different from primary or secondary weapons, but there are a few key differences. First of all, there are no prime mods when it comes to arch guns or heavy guns, and there are no Riven mods currently either, but the developer did state that they will be introducing Riven mods sometime, I don't know when exactly. But without prime mods and without Riven mods, that means that it's a lot simpler to build a weapon, also you don't need to forma a thousand times. As you will see, my weapon has been formatted only twice and I have basically all the capacity I need to make whatever build I want. Simply add two V symbols to the weapon because it does come with a default dash. Speaking of which, let's start modding with damage. Robot Online battle 100% mandatory, 100% damage, and you can also go for Sabot rounds. Now this one will offer you 60% damage and 3 meters worth of punch through. This might seem like a new mod to you, that's because you get it from the Orb Mother event quest thingy. Oh, bounty, yeah, that's what it's called, a bounty. Unfortunately, the chance to drop is awfully low, so you're looking at about 100 plat from the trade chat. So bear that one in mind. It is a pretty powerful mod, but we're gonna keep it as an option slot for now. Next, multi-shot. The best thing on everything, and you only have one option. It's called dual rounds with 60% multi-shot from the trade chat, about 10 to 15 plat. If not, you can farm Arc Wing missions and try to get this one. And you will see a trend when it comes to mods for Arc Guns. The values are not really all that high if you compare them to primary mods or secondary mods. This is not a whole lot, 60% multi-shot and 100% damage. However, you will see that the weapon is fully capable of kicking a gratuitous amount of critical chance with parallax scope, 100% critical chance, bumping up our crit chance to 56% and we're gonna get some critical damage with hollowed bullets, 80% critical damage, bumping the crit multi to 4.3x. Next we're gonna go into some elemental damage, and elemental damage should be applied depending on your own circumstance, where are you going, who are you fighting, and so on and so forth. 
For example, maybe you're up against the infested. I would recommend AoE weapons heavily modded in the heat, for example, like the Fluctus or the Ignis Wraith. But if you're going up against Corpus, keep in mind that their main damage mitigation is shields, and you can bypass shields using toxin or using gas. It's your choice, really. When it comes to the Corpus, they don't really have that much damage mitigation, even though some of their units are equipped with alloy armor. Against Corpus, I would recommend you just bring a crowd control frame and you're gonna be all good. When it comes to the Grenier, these are some of the toughest targets in Warframe and today we're gonna be testing against Corrupted Heavy Gunner level 120 and these girls are equipped with Ferrite Armor and Ferrite Armor will be taking 75% bonus damage from Corrosive. Also Corrosive on a status proc will be reducing some of that armor so your subsequent shots, which we do have a lot, will be dealing more and more damage. Electricity and Toxin. Should I go for the 90 mods or the 60-60 mods? But here is a bit of a difference because you don't have 90 mods when it comes to Argand you have 120% mods so of course the proposition does change quite a little bit but once again if you're going level 100 plus I would recommend you go for the 60 60 mods charge bullets now this one I believe is from the form for Morian something like that event it's an arc wing event and you can get a lot of the 60 60 mods if not all the 60 60 mods from that event from the trade chat I spent 15 plat for this one on PC toxin next Contamination casing, 60% toxin and 60% status chance, just like same rules apply as with charged bullets. Well, at least, at the very least, battle doesn't bring it, so there you go. We still have two more mod slots left on the weapon, and let me introduce a fantastic mod by the name of Critical Focus with 60% critical chance and damage when aiming. So basically, when you're aiming, it's, it's kind of like an Argon scope for arc guns. So bear that one in mind. This one is obtained also from doing the Orb Mother bounty, but you can buy it from the trade chat for about 60-70 plat, so it's not exactly non-expensive either. As for the last mod, you can go for something like Sabot round, 60% damage with 3 meters worth of punch through. Now this is a fantastic build and it will do fantastically well, but since I know I'm shooting ferrite armor, I have a better idea. I can go for a 1. 20 mod since my corrosive is not higher than impact puncture and slash times 4. What does that have to do with anything? Well, it's pretty simple. The IPS rules in Warframe when it comes to proccing. Impact, puncture and slash. The physical types have a 4 times greater chance at proccing over elemental types such as corrosive, heat, cold, etc. etc. So if I really want to get corrosive to proc, I should add at least one additional 120 mod. So we're gonna get rid of several rounds and we're gonna go with electrified battle. Now corrosive is proc priority number one or should be it is, is it yes yes it is this is the first build we're gonna be testing just keep in mind that the stats that you see here sometimes do get polluted for example if you guys were to use the same weapon in your uh, arc wing loadout let's see like this and I add these mods here and then I'm gonna go down here you will see if you go into upgrade the stats get all polluted and all whatnot no you do not get an 84% crit chance and a 6.2x critical multiplier unfortunately it counts both of the sets of mods that you have in your arc wing and in your heavy gun loadout as well this is just a visual bug that's it okay it doesn't have any actual effect and damage level 120 corrupted heavy gunners and these should do quite nicely now take a look at this animation it's beautiful, it's glorious, I love it, but the problem is it takes way too long to equip your arc gun, so I would love it to be at least 50% faster. Now take a look at this, the weapon is fully capable of threading through high level targets like nobody's business, and this is just bloody beautiful. And there are no Rivens, no Prime Mods involved, nothing at all, so can you imagine Riven and Prime Mods for weapons such as this? The problem with heavy guns is the fact that you cannot get your ammo off the ground or from something like carrier. There's only one unit that drops this heavy ammo and it's only available during the Orb Mother event. And by the way, if you want to take this gun into the Orb Mummy thingy, all you gotta do is build radiation with the 120 mods. No need to be build status chance, in that case just go for electricity and heat, the 120 mods. Now you see the ammo, 971, and if I was to unequip this, and switch back to my regular weapons because I cannot use them while I have my heavy gun equipped. All I can do is the quick melee attack for the most part. You will see that now I get a cooldown. 1 minute and 20 something seconds. Now this cooldown is highly dependent on how much ammo you had left in your weapon. However, there is kind of a smart way to somewhat mod around this. The maximum cooldown, in case you deplete the entire ammo reserve, is 5 minutes. But if you were to go 
and build some maximum ammo you will see that this cooldown is not affected so it's still a maximum of five minutes so in a way if you're going into your arc gun and going for some additional ammo with what's it called yes ammo chain now this one is a fairly common drop no need to worry about it you will see that you're going to be getting a hundred percent extra ammo and the cooldown does not get affected so therefore you are getting a lot more uptime out of the weapon and you can take it a step further as well you can go into carrier now while carrier will not generate ammo for you it simply does not work it will still work with the first part of ammo case increases ammunition capacity by 25 percent so you're still getting that extra 25 percent and if you take a look 300 in the clip and 3000 additional ammo which is more than enough for basically almost any mission unless of course you guys want to go into a defense or a survival for an hour two five or some other waste of time like that that said let's talk about actual warframe buffs and for that we're going to be using lady mirage prime when it comes to auras you can't really use an aura to buff the damage of your heavy weapons there is no such aura pistol lamp rifle lamp will simply not work so if you know you're gonna fight grenier the best case uh, will be corrosive projection with minus 30 percent armor keep in mind this is an aura so it will stack if four guys in your party if everybody has this on then the grenier will turn their health bars to red signifying that they have no more armor in which case you should build viral damage since it will be doing dealing 75 percent extra damage versus clone flesh when it comes to arcanes again you can't really use flat damage arcanes like we used to something like rage for example or precision because they simply do not apply these apply to secondary weapons or they apply to primary weapons but what you can use is arcane avenger this is a 30 percent critical chance increase bonus additive after and it basically applies to everything and it will work with your heavy weapons or your arc guns you can also double stack these even though the ui does not support double stacking so you will not see separate proc instances they do count separately so bear that one in mind now one final test and this time we're gonna be going for maximum warframe buffs and you can use chrome or whatever else you guys prefer i prefer mirage prime let's put sabot rounds this time and we're gonna go like this and we're also gonna be unpausing the ai for kicks and lulls Activate Mirage's free ability for a massive damage increase as well as the clones. But first I'm gonna let him hit me a couple of times so I can get my procs of Arcane Avenger. And you will see that with the procs up from Arcane Avenger, I'm gonna be able to get orange crits on these targets. Oh wait, I didn't equip my arc gun. By the way, this is the Ignis Wraith. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> you wanna build the Ignis Wraith like this? Well, check the link in the video cards now. Okay, for real this time, activating Mirage's free ability for a massive damage increase and we're also gonna be activating the clones as well. Now the point to these arc guns was a big bada boom cooldown that we can activate in normal average everyday missions. And of course they can do that, but so can a whole lot of other primary and not to mention secondary weapons as well. They are very powerful, yet I'm not sure they achieve what they wanted with the whole big bada boom thing. What they did achieve, at least from my point of view, is letting us have a crack at some weapons that most players would simply ignore. Now, because they are usable in normal average everyday missions, maybe you're gonna be paying some attention to them. And this leads me to a question. Do you guys care about any of these? Do you care about arc guns in normal missions? Do you actually use them or not? I'm honestly very curious about it because I love them. I honestly do, they're absolutely fantastic, but I'm only one person. As for the Imperator Vandal, it's a fantastic weapon as you can see and it can tear through high level enemies like a hot knife through butter. On the other hand, is it worth building? Of course it is worth building. It's not that high MR, the full set doesn't cost that much on the trade chat and you don't need super expensive mods for it either. So, there you go. As always, my name is Ben Lazar, thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you want to suggest a particular weapon review. And while I can't exactly promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week, I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time my friends, bye bye.